I don't, I don't even know where to begin. I truly do not know where to start this review about this movie about a giant fireball. Don't be taken for a fool for a second into thinking that AOE stands for Age of Extinction. It actually stands for a lot of explosions. So if anything, I want you to take that away from this review. Anytime you see the AOE acronym, I want you to cross it out with a red marker, write a lot of explosions, and then possibly for some extra credit, retrace what you just wrote in glue and sprinkle some pink like glitters on top of all that so people know for sure what they're buying. I'm just sweating. I'm not really like trying to struggle for anything to say, but it's, it's a little hot in here. I'm wearing my new Einstein Smoking Colors t-shirt. I'm going to be talking about a lot of spoilers, but honestly, it's a Bay film, so it's not really going to ruin your day to hear any of this. At best, it's going to upset your lunch hour. Basic premise of the film is that Autobots are on the run because they're being hunted. Why they're being hunted? Well, it's because of the whole thing with Dark of the Moon where they pretty much destroy Chicago and threaten the world with bringing Cybertron closer to Earth. That's pretty understandable. Now, if you're the Autobots, you want to stay low, which is why Optimus took on the old retro-style G1 Mack truck and Bumblebee went back to being an old 70s-style Camaro race car. Optimus does eventually upgrade to a better, sleeker truck. We've all seen it. The problem is, when you do that, you put giant Autobot emblems on the truck, painting necessarily giant targets on you. Optimus upgrades, and then decides to emblazon himself with Autobot emblems. Bay gets right up on you with the Autobot emblems, too. Like, this close. No, not even that close. Closer than that. This close. You get uh, Ratchet in the very beginning, getting hunted down by this PMC led by Kelsey Grammer and his squad of... Death car hunters. I don't know what the hell they're called, but Lockdown's with them. And oddly enough, they are perfectly fine working with Lockdown, even though he's considered a Transformer and a Lamborghini. Really, dude, a Lamborghini? Not really that, you know, you're gonna blend in that well. Whatever. Anyway, Ratchet does die, but it's his own damn fault for not even bothering to change his alt mode. Like later on in the film, Optimus states he changed his alt mode to hide better. Bit of G1 nostalgia went back to being the classic G1 Mack truck. Ratchet was still lying green when they were hunting him. Then after that, you get to meet the new Autobots who are destroying a national park. Hmm. Those scamps. So you got Hound, who is in effect your new Ironhide. Interesting mashup of not only John Goodman's voice, but apparently his body type. Uh, che Guevara's face, and the hair trigger of Yosemite Sam. And then there's Springer, for some reason they're calling him Drift though. And then Crosshairs. I don't know a damn thing about Crosshairs. I know this Crosshairs. This Crosshairs from England. I know next to nothing about this Crosshairs. I know he has a duster. Pretty cool duster coat in the movie. Crap toy. As a Transformers fan, to me that screams Rodimus. If you painted this dude red, that would be Rodimus right there, duster and all. Rodimus would actually look pretty good in a duster. And keep in mind, we're not even anywhere near close to seeing the Dinobots yet. This is an almost three hour film, and they don't appear until the last 20, 30 minutes. And the reason that is, is because this is not one movie. This is in fact two movies with two plots, and nary shall the two ever meet in the middle. First plot is gonna be about lockdown. He comes back a lot, he kicks a lot of ass. Second one is about the Transformium that Stanley Tucci was harvesting from dead Transformers, which he uses to build Galvatron. Okay, cool. Rainbow Dash is in this movie, by the way. Michael Bay loves him some Hasbro references. Rainbow Dash from My Little Pony is in this movie as a gun. Target Master Rainbow Dash. There is all sorts of fan fiction and toys being created that you don't want to know about being spawned from this very instance. Back to what I was saying. Stanley Tucci wants to build a truck based on Optimus Prime to invoke the image of Optimus Prime. Uh, I was like, cool. They've actually done a little more and explained a bit in this movie. So it's like you, you understand from A to B why they did that. They want a truck that looks like Optimus to invoke the heroic nature of Optimus. I get that. Stanley Tucci wants to name the robot they're building based on Megatron's parts to look like Optimus and call it Galvatron. Megatron to Galvatron, and he saw nothing at all wrong with this naming scheme. And after that, that's all the introduction you get. Now you got your two major bad guys, and this is where you get two different films. You got Galvatron reinserting his will over his new body with no spark in the body, so he's got a hole, which Optimus goes for. He tries to stab the hole 
where there is nothing. I don't get, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Megatron's back, now he's Galvatron. Now he's got the added bonus that he's Thomas Hayden Church from Spider-Man 3, and he can Sandman himself to anywhere he pleases and back to truck mode. There's this whole arc about the Autobots being on Lockdown ship and then getting away after Optimus gets captured with like one of Lockdown's escape pods, but for some odd reason, it's the trophy room too. So like the Dinobots are actually there. They're actually there in this escape pod trophy room and they don't acknowledge it. That's all they did. They got tossed around a lot. They guarded a bridge. They, they ate some of the transvectors. I don't know what else to tell you. They were gray. They were very, very gray. You look at them and you go, wow. That's a lot of gray. Marky Mark gets an OP gun sword while he's there, which shoots sparks basically, uh, does a lot of damage and can stop him from getting crushed under hundreds of thousands of tons of metal or transformium. How does that work? I mean like, yeah, I'm blocking your foot. Uh, I'm protected under the power of a contract from Paramount for three more movies. Ah, you can't kill me. This is where the film winds down and ends, or tries to blow itself up. Optimus literally splits the difference with Lockdown. No, splits it upwards. He splits the difference upwards with Lockdown. Lockdown's dead. Put up a good fight. All those transvectors come in. One of them was Shockwave with two heads. Start coming after them and Optimus is like, you know, I know just the thing. Takes a grenade of lockdowns, plants it, and I'm like, how are you gonna get away? Well, he flies. He flies, flies. Never shown the ability to fly before, except in Radov, but that was explained with Jetfire's extra pieces all around him like a backpack. Optimus literally pulls a G1, Puppet Prime, and flies. This scene came so out of left field. I was expecting Optimus to say, whoa, slow down there. There'll be more time to answer questions next week. But for now, I leave you with The Touch by Stan Bush. I'll be back soon to transform your day into an adventure. And then that's when the grenade lockdown had left over goes off. And it goes off for two minutes, 37 seconds. I can see why he prefers those grenades, because they have longevity. Like, they don't just blow up, they blow just everything up constantly. And then they, they go back and they, they blow it up some more, and then they come over here, they toss these guys around, and then they like, oh, you know what, one more time for good measure, that guy was kind of chunky. Toss him around. And then, then you really got nothing left. And I'm like, pew, firework. Um, Optimus decides now's a good time to release the Dinobots back into the wild. Go, you're free. Do as you please. Which kind of seems like counterproductive to the whole thing because we don't know why in the movie verse they. <clears throat> no, no, that's not right. We don't know what they're capable of in the movie verse. We've seen them breathe fire, we've seen them transform. We don't know what they're going to do in this new environment. So there they go. Optimus says, be on your best behavior, <laughs> go on your way. Then he flies away again. Just like, as easily as he dodged a grenade, I don't know why he saved his ability for the finale of the film. He flies away from the explosion. He flies away in his face. All the while beaming the message of the film, I will find whoever you are that sent Lockdown after me. Dude, go back to his ship and find out. You don't need to fly off under your own power. I know you got to Earth under your own power. You don't need to fly off on your own, under your own power to do that. Where are you gonna go? What if this place is like trillions of miles, light years further than Cybertron ever was? How are you gonna make that journey? Why don't you just go check out Lockdown Ship? I'm pretty sure you understand the language. <laughs> and I actually like the film. I cannot believe I'm admitting it. I actually, from start to three hour finish, liked the film. There was not one moment I was bored. I was pretty excited throughout the entire thing. I like a busy film. Anything that keeps going and doesn't slow down to a grinding halt usually will keep me entertained. So a busy film is the best film in my opinion. And this was definitely a busy film. It was 
three movies. I know I said two, it was three. You got Galvatron, Lockdown, and then the whole thing with not only uh, the Transformium, but also it's like, who's your daddy, Optimus? Because like, that was literally the question posed by Lockdown at one point to Optimus. So, great film? No. No, 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 no. Not even a good film, but a damn busy film. And that damn busy film kept me entertained. So that, I might get on Blu-ray. 